your right name. Hallelujah. Just to be close to you. Hallelujah. We're going to chase after you, God. Until the days may see no end. Amen. Glory be to God. Come on now. We're going to welcome the Holy Spirit. Oh! 
God. You can just lift up your head. Lean back and take your mind back. And pull out a hymn that says praise him. Jesus, bless your Savior. Hallelujah.
as your pastor, I'm delighted. I feel a shout while I'm right now. I know you my show. Facebook family, land of promise, what a delight and a joy it is to worship together once again. We're thankful to God for this privilege of being able to stay connected even during this pandemic. But I believe that there's a cloud rising in the sky that it won't be long now for we'll be back in this worship place together. And oh, what a day it will be. Can you imagine? Ah, sister, sister Lola, I want to see you shout. No, no, Brenda, I want to see you run around these eyes. Bob, I want to see you jump as high as you can. I can't wait until we get back into this place of worship. I just know that God has been sanctifying this place in our absence. And if you don't need a blessing, if you don't need a miracle, I recommend you don't show up when we come down here. Because the anointing of God has been resting over the land of promise. And as soon as you reach this place, as soon as your feet step on the ground, God will move in a mighty, mighty, mighty way. Thank you, God. I want to say happy Father's Day to all of our fathers, yeah, 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 all of our papas and granddads, happy Father's Day to you. And we celebrate fathers today. Somebody said, um, what's the difference between Mother's Day and Father's Day? And um, the little boy said, well, you spend less. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know, I know, but we're grateful to God for those of you who are honoring your fathers today and what a gift a father is in your life as a son and as a daughter. We thank God for the calling that's on your life as a father. We honor that and we're praying for you and we're encouraging you to continue to be the father, the best that you can be, even in these times. I'm grateful to God for having the gift of being a father. And I can celebrate it all by myself. But it's nothing wrong with somebody walking up to you, texting you, sending you an email, saying thank you for being a good father an example do that to some father today he's waiting it may not look like he wants it he may not look like he he, he desires it but believe me in his heart if you are a son or a daughter a spouse or sister or brother let them know that you champion them as being an example of a good father and so even, even now, as we share in this worship, I'm, I'm not the kind of pastor that like to um, preach subject matters, I believe, in moving with the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's so interesting because this is Father's Day, and to escape the fact, the significance of a father would be almost committing a carnal sin. Because during these difficult and challenging times, it is more and more important for fathers to rise up and be what God has called them to be. It's during these times in which we're living in the midst of so much tension, racially, economically, in our judicial system, that we cannot as fathers, we cannot as men uh, relinquish and let go of the rope that connects us to our children. Why? Because our children need us like never before. 
and it's time for you and I to, to, to take advantage and take seriously the calling that God places on our lives. And I'm, I'm so thankful to God that you're in a position, whether you're connected or disconnected, to make such an impact during these times in which we're living in. You wonder why black lives matter to me. You wonder why I'm trying to make a difference with others. You wonder why black lives um, um, is my concern as well. Well, let me tell you, I have two black sons and I am so concerned about their present that it frightens me in terms of their future. Because you wonder whether or not they will have a future. You wonder whether or not their future will be secure with safety and protection. And so I'm, I'm, I'm a proponent of Black Lives Matter. I'm a proponent of young men and young ladies becoming all they are created to be, particularly if they are black. And so I want us to be able to understand as a family of God that we have to make it a necessity to encourage our fathers to be involved, to get involved in our children's lives. Because our children are at the point where they are demanding certain rights and they are demanding a presence, they are demanding change. And they cannot stand on their own two feet. They can stand on a strong foundation. I'm here to let you know that the Bible speaks very clearly that one generation to the next must be able to deposit the jewels, the, 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 the presence and the power of God in a way that it would impact in terms of where they are going. I get it from my father. I say that often to my children sometimes when they look at me because of something I say or because something I do. I say I get it from my father. In essence, I'm giving them a foundation for my presence, a foundation for who I am, that I just didn't show up here, but I came here through the cords and the seed and the lineage of my father. And my father shares in me to the point where I'm sharing in them as well. And so here it is for a few moments, we, we see how God can use a father to change the course of children's history, to change and set the stage for their success. In other words, good fatherly advice. You read it at your quiet time. It's in Proverbs chapter 4. It talks about how, how, how this King Solomon, who was known for his wisdom, who was known for being a king that God had imparted great wisdom on. Matter of fact, when he became king, God asked him, said, what do you want? I'll give you anything, riches, fame, fortune. Tell me what you want and I'll make sure you have it. Solomon said, give me wisdom to be able to determine, to be able to judge right from wrong, to give advice, to be able to be a teacher, a leader. And God gave him great wisdom. And in this Proverbs, Solomon begins to write the wisdom that God had given him and the wisdom that he had learned and he put it in penmanship and left a letter to his son. And he, he began to, he opens up by, by, by giving attribute to God who blessed him with so much, with, to God who helped him with so much. Now, the book of Proverbs, I'm gonna help you here, the book of Proverbs is considered the book of wisdom. And wisdom is knowledge, knowledge that's applied. Not knowledge that sits on a bookshelf, but knowledge 
that, that's applied, that has been applied, that will be applied, knowledge that has proven to be successful. When you get knowledge, you get power. I always say ignorance is out of style. And in order for you and I to be able to be what God wants us to be as a woman, as a man of God, we have to understand that we need the wisdom and the knowledge that God gives us through the realities of our lives. What you're going through is not just for you to just walk through. No, it's for you to have some experience that will generate some knowledge that you can pass on to the next generation. Somebody say, I know what my mama told me. I know what my daddy told me. They told you because they experienced it for themselves and they are wise enough to impart some knowledge on you. The young folks say, yeah, that's facts right there. That's facts right there. So we as parents, we as fathers, we have to begin to teach our children and give them the knowledge to the wisdom that we've gained in our years. These, these gray hairs on my beard are not just coming through time. They're coming through trials and tests. They're coming through sickness and situations. They're coming through dilemmas and difficulties. They're coming through hard times and tribulation. They're coming through a whole lot of things, but yet they're not coming without a big biology. They're not coming without some information. They're coming with the wisdom that God has given me. Solomon writes this, and he writes it in such a way that he wants to instruct them in, in a way that will impact his children's life. And the first thing he talks about, you know, you read it, verse, verse 2, verse, well, verse 1 says, I, I'm giving you some fatherly advice. He said, I'm giving you some advice. And, and he goes on in verse 2, he says, I'm giving you some good guidance, some good instructions, and I'm giving you a cover. And just for a few moments, I want you to understand that, that God has placed fathers and father figures or mentors or whoever you might be so that you might share the wisdom and the teachings that you've learned. First of all, he says, I want you to not turn away from my instructions. In, in essence, it's a father's responsibility to instruct. Instruct means to teach, to give lesson, to, to be able to share your, your instructions with your son or your daughter in a way that will help them through life. In other words, we, we understand that there's a, a, an anointing in your teaching your children. In essence, you can only teach your children between the ages of zero and about 16 or 17 because after then they're moving to another level. And so as a father, we have to take advantage of those crucial years and begin to instruct and teach our children. Yes, teach them how to ride a bicycle, teach them how to throw a baseball, but yet teach them how to be a young boy, how to use the bathroom, how to take a shower, what to wash first. In essence, in absence of you as a father teaching them, their life will be somewhat lacking in certain areas. I'm talking to some real daddies in here. I'm not talking to a daddy that just shows up on birthdays and just shows up on graduation. No, God is calling us to be a daddy, even in diapers, to be a daddy when times are difficult, to be a daddy to get them on the bus the first day of school, to be a father to them when they come home and they didn't make the team, to be a father to them when a little girl has broken their heart, when a young boy has turned their back on them. You and I have the responsibility to teach them. That's what the Bible said, teach your children. So they'll know which way to go. Train a child, teach them, and when they're old, they won't depart. Yeah. I know this may be be a little, 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 little fundamental for you, but we need to get back to, to being good teachers in our household. Yeah. We can't expect the school system to teach our children. They can educate them on certain things, but if we haven't taught them before they got there, all they're going to do is just mess the teacher classroom up. All they're going to do is get detention and school suspension. All they're going to do is be labeled in you know, some kind of way with some kind of intelligence or mental problem. No, if we learn as fathers that from day one, while that baby is wrapped in his mother's womb, you're talking to him. You're telling him 
Son, daughter, you're the best thing that's ever happened to this world. Son, daughter, you're going to be glorious. You're going to be somebody. And when they come forth, let them hold your finger. I remember when my son, my youngest son was born, and I went to see him. You know, they're so small, you're scared to touch them. The nurse said, you want to hold them? I said, no. <laughs> So I just stuck my finger out and he just grabbed my finger and held on to it. Yeah. To the point where I couldn't let it go. Yeah. He wouldn't let it go. In, in other words, he, 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 was, he was holding his father's hand. And, and his father was saying, I, 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 I take this, you holding my hand, serious enough that I'm not going to snatch it out of your hand until you're ready to let go. I'm telling some fathers today, stop snatching your hand away from your daughter. Stop snatching your hands away from your son. Hold their hand. Help them. Walk with them. Lift them up. Build them up. Keep them tight. Why? Because black lives matter. And that's a dust. That's a dust. You got to teach them. You know, because, because listen, not, not only is it teach them, it said, but give them good guidance. You know, at some point, you know, if you haven't been there for your child, this is for some of us fathers who um, took a vacation. <laughs> and then we decide to show up when they're 13, 14. You can't show up like a teacher because you wasn't there. But you have a privilege to show up and give them some guidance. I've seen some of the worst episodes when fathers and sons try to get back together after some years because now this, this baby has become a young boy. This young boy has become a young man and he's never heard your voice saying clean up that room. He's never heard your voice saying take out that trash. He's never seen your expression of discipline. So you can no longer teach them. You have to come along and guide them. I didn't say drink with them. I didn't say smoke with them. I didn't say be their friend. I said be a guidance. In other words, be a coach to them. Say, say, son, I'm sorry, baby. Girl, I'm sorry I wasn't here. I'm sorry my mind was messed up. I'm sorry I didn't take this serious. But I'm here now, and I want to be right here beside you. Coaching you, coaching you, coaching you. You know, at some point, we, 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 we began to become coaches for our children. When your children get 19, 20, 21, this, this, is, this, is, this is a good class you need to sign up for, Parenting 101. You can't tell that child what to do. You can, you, can, you can give them some guidance, some advice, but you can't say, this is what you're going to do. No, no, they will rebel and turn the other way, and they got a right because they, they, are, they are grown. When I talk to my oldest son now, you know, he got, you know, he'd be talking and, you know, and he'd say something and I might not agree with it, might not like it. And um, he'll say, Dad, what you think about it? You know, I can't go off on him and say, no, don't do that. No, don't do that. No, I got, I got to listen and I got to put my coaching father hat on and, and start talking about what he's saying and give some more options. And, and after about three or four options and about an hour conversation, all of a sudden his light will come on. And, and before I knew it, he, he's thinking right. He's headed in the right direction. I didn't have to push him. I didn't have to cuss him. I didn't have to let him smack him. No, we just had conversation. And I just kind of coached the conversation. Any good quarterback can tell you. He said the coach can tell me in my ear and show me on the playbook. But when I get out there myself, I got to see it. I got to look at it. I say, and when I see it, I throw it there. And all I got to do is throw my hands up and say, Coach had it right. Daddy had it right. Let me tell you, I get it from my daddy because my daddy got it from God. And if he got it from God, it was good enough for him. It's good enough for you. Solomon said, Son, don't, 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 don't turn away. From this instruction, don't get away from this guidance. Don't, 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 don't do that. Don't, don't, don't ever let nobody do that. Don't, don't ever let nobody um, 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 sway you from the foundation that you're built upon. I wasn't born with a dad. Um, um, I, when I was born, my daddy wasn't there. I don't even know who he is. Yeah, my daddy left me. My daddy's passed on. Well, 
yeah, yeah, that's, that's reality. But you cannot let that define who you shall become. Because God put father figures in your life. Young girl, you may not have a dad in your life, but God, God, God got some mentor that's, that, that, that he'll hook you up with. I remember my daughter and I, you know, she's been our daughter since she's about two. We adopted her and all. And um, 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 I made a covenant, not, not, not with her, but with God, that if you allow me to be a father to her, I'll do the best I can. You, you think I wanted to, to, to sit there and, and look, play with a doll baby? You think I wanted to sit there and let her put makeup on me? You think I wanted to sit there as like the Marines said, oh, I and be looking like I'm looking like I'm, you know, kind of on the other side of things. But but because I made that covenant with God, I got to sit there and, and say, yeah, baby, this is how you can do it. Yeah, yeah, you can pull on daddy's ear. You can rub daddy's elbow. You can you can you can do what you need to do with daddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I be father and daughter. I go to that dance with you. I get on that dance floor. Neither one of us know how to dance real good. But I'm not gonna be ashamed. I'm gonna own you. I'm gonna claim you. Why? Because I covenant with God to be your covering. Listen, 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 listen. If you are a mentor, don't take that lightly. If you're somebody's coach, don't take that lightly. If you're somebody's stepfather, godfather, or step-in father, you, 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 it's a calling from God. It's, 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 it's even doubly important that you understand that and be what God wants you to be because they, in essence, they will, they will define themselves by the reflection of who you are. When you guide them, your son or your daughter, I'm done. Almost. When you guide them, you know, you're teaching your daughter that she's a queen. Yeah. And don't no queen get beat on. Don't no queen get abused. Don't no queen settle for no peasant. But a queen walks in her statue, walks as a Nubian prince, and walks with a head up high, and she's not defined by what's on a magazine cover or what's on Facebook. She's defined by who she is because you told her, you claimed her as a queen. Yeah, same with your sons. Don't you allow your sons not to receive yes. teaching and God. You know, you know, um, I got to confess, I'm trying to be transparent. Um, 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 I didn't learn to cry um, when I got my first job. I didn't learn to cry when, when um, I felt racial discrimination. My daddy taught me to cry. When I made mistakes, and he gave you that look or disciplined you in a way that you were convinced you weren't going to do it no more. When I shed those tears, then, 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 then I understood what it meant to cry when you hurt. And so when, when I grew up, and, 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 and I'm being transparent, it, it, it wasn't in my mind to let racial discrimination make me cry. It wasn't in my mind to let no white European make me cry because, because I had already cried and I learned through my tears what I needed to do. And so we as fathers, we got to learn how to teach our children that they can express their emotions, they can allow themselves to be human as possible, but they will not be broken. They will not be broken. You better hear me this because if you don't learn train and teach your children somebody else will train and teach your children some sheriff will lock them up some deputy will handcuff them some judge will sentence them the devil is a liar you teach your son you teach your daughter that whatever they do wrong you're there to let them know I will not tolerate that so they won't be crossed they won't be hurt they won't be phased when they're faced with something not forget my God. He yeah. said, I like verse 30, he said, for I once was my father's son. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 he said, I'm not giving you 
just in the air stuff. Solomon said, I was a son to my father. Check this out, y'all. His father was King David. You understand what I'm saying? So he came from royalty. And his father gave him these instruction and guidance. And so now he's passing it on. Because he said, you got to learn this because no, nobody else is going to teach this to you. Watch this now. Because, because don't nobody know you like I know you. And so you have to be careful that what you're, what you, what you're doing and what you're learning, you're applying it, knowledge, applying it to your circumstance. Come on. Man, let me make this clear here. I got two black sons, two good looking black sons. Yeah. They got that good hair. They don't have their hair like their daddy. They got the hair like their mama and their grandmama, but, but they're good looking boys. And so, just like everybody else, you know, you got to have that talk with them. You, you got to have that conversation with them. No, no, nobody else in, in the world, like black America, got to have that serious conversation. When, when, when they start getting a little hair under their chin, when they start driving the car, when they start going out by themselves, before they do that, you got to sit them down and say, look here, son, let, let me explain something to you. I know you think... Everybody is kind and everybody is fair and then all those children in the same are different colors. They're your friends, you know, Billy and Tommy, all of them, they're your friends. But let me let you in on some real teaching here because this is what my father told me. So I'm telling you that you got to be better than anybody around you. You got to be stronger than anybody that doesn't look like you. You got to be able to handle more than anybody else around you can handle. You know, when 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 they get pulled over, you you know the story. You, you got to teach them, you know, hands on the steering wheel, don't move, you know, don't talk much, you know, crack the window, say yes sir, no sir. I say I say listen because because when they pull you over, and this is a shame, they don't know that your mother is a medical doctor. They, they don't know that your father is a pastor. They don't know that your father is a doctor. They don't know that you come from good stock. They, it's not your neighborhood that own you. It's not what they see. It's that they see you as a black man. They see you as a friend. They see you as a villain. They see you as a foe. They see you as somebody who just despised by society. But you cannot let that police that pull you over put you in that trap that make you think that you know who they think you are? No, you sit there with a quiet life. You keep your cool. You say, yes, sir, no, sir, because I want you to live to see another day. I want to be able to go to court with you. I want to be able to sit down beside you and get you a good lawyer and tell that lawyer, I don't want to pay any price, do anything, but I want justice. That's what Black Lives Matter is about. It's all about justice. We're tired of being ridiculed. We're tired of being shot in the back as we're running away. We're tired of being subjected to police brutality, hatred, and denigration. We're ready now like never before to say I want justice. He said, he said, because if, if you listen on our, our, our sons and daughters prayer, if you listen, he said, he said, he said, you will live. That's what Solomon said. If you listen to these instructions, to these guidance, you're going to live. How many of y'all parents want your children to live? Can you imagine getting that call? Can you imagine, you know, what, 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 what George Floyd's family felt, what, what, what Rayshard Brooks' family felt, his, his children, to get that call, his wife, his mother, to get that call? You don't want that call? We don't want it. So we got to teach them to live because a father will assure his children I don't care what kind of situation you in you call me that's what my daddy used to say he said he said when, when it, whatever you get into whatever trouble you get in whether you did it or not he said don't talk to nobody till I get there he said don't, don't, don't tell them you don't have nothing to say call my daddy in other words he was saying I'm going to be there with you 
and, 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 and whether you guilty or not guilty, whether you've been drinking or not drinking, I'm going to be there with you. Listen, listen, I remember, I remember um, 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 growing up in my neighborhood, you know, we had same stuff, man. You know, y'all ain't the first one to smoke weed and all that kind of stuff, you know. This, we had, but we had, we, you know, had folk in the neighborhood who were doing drugs, selling drugs, you know, right? You know, but, but, but because of my father's instruction and guidance, he made it clear. He said, don't you let me catch you on that corner. <laughs> don't you let me, don't, don't let me see you hanging with him or him or him. And I'm like, you know, I'm trying my best to try to be cool and try not to go around, try to shake the brother's hand on the corner, but I knew I couldn't stay long, so I had to think it a little bit, you know, I had to hit it real good and quick, and I would see my daddy sometimes standing at the door just checking it out, just, just making sure, because he was serious. And don't you know that, that, that people, are, my neighbors, people across the street, people up the street, some of them did 15, 10 years in prison because of drugs, because of, of selling, because of using. Some of them not even alive now. Why? Because I'm alive, not because I made the right decisions. I'm alive because I had a father. I had, I had a daddy. My, my brother had somebody to be able to say, if you do it, you're going to have to come see me. And when you let no police officer arrest you, I'm going to arrest you and put you against the wall and you're going to wish you never broke my law. You learn how to live Subjection of authority when you got a daddy in your house. Not only that, I'm done. I'm done. He says, he goes down, you read it later on. He said, and not only will it make you live, he says, for when you get this wisdom, this knowledge, this understanding, it will protect you. He said, it's going to protect you. I, I remember um, my, my youngest son in, in, in school, they um, had a project to do. And you know, he's real artistic, you know, he does his thing. And he did a project, he had to do something, I forget what, but he did his on Tupac. And um, he made this little shoebox, they call it a shoebox project. And he had a skull in there, and a bandana, and a CD. And he had it on exhibit with the rest of the kids stuff. And so, he came home and one day and he was looking, you know, strange. I said, what's up, son? He said, Dad, I don't know. I was called to the office. I called to the office. He said, um, I said, what for? He said, well, my teacher told me to go to the office. And when I went there, the, I think they called the SRO, the police that's in the school, you know, took him to the vice principal office. And I said, well, what went on? He said, well, they were vice principal was asking me about this project I did, what made me do that, why did I know Tupac, um, why would I pick him, and I, I said, what you tell him? He said, well, I told him, you know, he's an artist, he's a well-known, you know, artist who's rapped and spoke for the pressures of the time, and uh, I said, what else he said? He said, well, he just said, you know, wondering, Am I connected, you know, with the bandana to a gang? I said, he said, what? He said, I'm wondering if, you, you, if I was connected to a gang. I, I said, what you tell him? He said, no. I told him, no. I said, then what did he do? He said, well, he told me to go back to class. And I said, he said, now I went back to class. I said, okay. I said, um, we'll take care of that. So the next morning, he getting dressed, going to school. When he get to the door to go out, I'm standing there. He said, Daddy, where you going? I said, I'm going with you. He said, you going to school? I said, yeah, I'm going to school. We, we, we got to have a conversation here. We, we got to have a conversation. And I got cleaner than the border half. I put on the best suit I had. Put, put on my shiny shoes and the best necktie. I got myself real clean. I told my wife, I said, we got to go to this school and, and the children all around and we walk through the front door. I said, now when we get in that office, I said, I want you to show me that vice principal. 
Yeah, I need to see him because 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 I, I got something I need to talk to him about. So we walk through the door and just so happened the vice principal is standing in the middle of the hallway, like right in the middle of the hallway. And my son John, you know, he was shy, he said, There he is, Dad. I said, What day is that? I said, Right there. He said, Yeah, I said, in the white shirt, right there, yeah. I said, Come on. I walked up to him, I said, excuse me, sir, I ain't gonna call his name. I said, I said, but I'm John's father. He said, oh, 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 oh. I said, yes, yes. I said, I'm John's father. I said, and he told me that you brought him into your office and questioned him about his gang activity as if he was in a gang. I said, let me tell you something, sir. I said, if he's in a gang, I'm the gang leader. I showed up here today to tell you, don't you ever, consume, don't you ever, contrive your mind to put my son in a box to make him feel like you don't think he's worthy to be here. I said, number one, he's a straight A student. Number two, his mama is a physician. Number three, I'm a pastor. Number four, I'm a black man. And we can't handle this educationally, communicatively. We can handle it in a physical way. I will drag you out here. I will stop you. I will show you that you don't mess with this black life. You don't put your hand. You don't put your voice. You don't say nothing negative. I said, for now on, if you got an issue with him, you see me. You call me. Here's my cell phone. Here's my church phone. And if you ever say something out of the way to my son again, I'll be right back up here. But I have a lawyer with me. And I have a physician with me. But I don't know how you're going to respond. Look at somebody and say, a father will protect his children. A father will go to jail. A father will save time. A father will make sure that the enemy, that the devil, that nobody will put their hands and put their voice on their son, on their daughter. Look at somebody and say, God is that kind of father. I got the clothes here, but I just can't talk about my daddy. But I had to talk about my other daddy, your other daddy. God is a father that will guide you, that will instruct you, and will protect you. Children get ahead. 
They want to label your children. Y'all remember Lion King, right? You know, this little cuff got caught. Here's several hyenas around. They walking, they looking, they looking at him. And oh, he gets nervous. Never should have been out here by myself. Never should have left home. I should have stayed under my parents' roof. And, and the hyenas, he, he was, the cub would step back. And the hyenas would step forward. He knew he was doomed. But he remember what his daddy said. He said, when you get caught in a hard place, he said, there's something in you. And you just got to cry out. And he tried as best as he could to get the biggest growl he could. He, he lifted his mouth wide open. He just said, ow. What no growl was more like a meow. And he did it again. And he said, ow. And he just kept backing up a little bit. And one last time he did it, he said, I'm going to do it as loud as I can. He took a deep breath and he said, all of a sudden, the hyena started running in every direction, going every place, and, and the little lion cub started jumping up and saying, I did it, I did it. My daddy told me I, if I raised up, if I stood up for myself, if I looked out, if I did what, I would be taken care of. And when he turned around, he saw his daddy standing there with his mouth wide open. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God we serve. He will stand behind me. He will.
be a better man, a better father, a better woman, a better child. And to protect me. You know what God would do? He said, I'll give you an example. My son, Jesus Christ, in whom I'm well pleased. I taught him, I guided him, and I protected him. And now, he's savior of the world. That's what God is doing in this movement. He's trying to save the world through the Christ of Jesus our Lord. Accept him today. You say, God, thank you for being my father. And for Jesus Christ being my savior. For helping me to get over my past and move forward in my present destiny and a future ahead. In Jesus' name. You need a church, you need a pastor. Put that on that message while you're looking at it. Say, I want to be a part of the I want to be a part of what God is doing. I want to be a part of what God has said unto us. Somebody will get right back with you. In Jesus' name. God. Listen, beloved, it's giving time. It's time to worship God in giving. It's time to give. I said it. You know, if we was in church, we'd be making some noise right now. It's time to give God his cards and his offering. I love it. Get that phone out. Get that app. Get that cash out. Get that Giveify app. Get your envelope. Whatever means you have, don't let this moment pass you by. Give God what God deserves, and God will give you more than you could ever think or believe. Because we share it together with our praise team. We want to hear together. This is week 25 with our challenge. We want God to as we meet each challenge week by week, God gets all the glory. for sharing that gift today. Listen, we are so thankful for the privilege of being able to share and worship with you on this beautiful Lord's Day. Please, beloved, enjoy the rest of your day. We're connecting every week, every day of the week. We're connecting with you. Stay connected with us through all of our media platforms. I'm praying for you, Pastor Reed. I'm praying that God will continue to anoint you and bring about a healing over your body. On the count of three, I just want y'all to shout, Pastor Reed, in Jesus' name. One, two, three. In Jesus' name, we believe in the healing power of the Almighty God. Listen, enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe, stay covered, and be blessed of God. I love you. Proud to be your pastor. Oh, yes, he is able. He can do it.